Uh, it's been many years that me and Paul we talk about uh, you know at Java One that uh, I should come here to meet you guys, and finally uh, it worked. So thanks a lot, Paul, for for putting all these together. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this this board here. I'll just make sure that I did turn it on. Yes. So you now one thing that we gotta do to synchronize the audio and the, and the video is do it. Right now it's now we can synchronize it. Okay. All right. So, okay, so uh, good night, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for you for you coming here. Um, you know, we, we're doing a, we're doing a tour around uh, many user groups. I'm gonna do so. I just arrived from Brazil this uh, this morning. I'm doing uh, San Diego today. I'll be a, a couple of days in in LA, and then I go to San Francisco and Chicago, and then Milwaukee, and then I come back to Chicago. And then I go to Jacksonville in Florida and Houston, Texas, and in Dallas, and then I go back to Brazil. And in, and in Brazil, I go fly, fly directly to, a, to another event in, in the south of Brazil, right? So, uh, and it's, it's great to, to be here uh, in San Diego, and um, I've been having fun already with Paul's uh, huge collection of Star Trek <laughs> things, right? Yeah. So, you know, I got I got here. Uh, I, was, I, I actually got to his house talking about Star Wars. And he's like, "No, Bruno, I'm Star Trek, not Star Wars." <laughs> and and the reason why I, was, I got into his house talking about Star Wars is because uh, I did a mini marathon of Star Wars in the plane. <laughs> so so you know, after doing a mini marathon of Star Wars in the plane, uh, where I did learn a few things about being a software developer. You know, you can, you can learn a lot about soft development uh, watching movies, you know that? You know, think about this, a few things we're going to talk about here today. So, uh, you know, I watched several Star Wars movies, but one of, one, one of them that I liked uh, was The Force Awakens. Who, seen, who here has seen the movie? Okay, most of you, right? Okay, so, so The Force Awakens was a very good movie, and, uh, but there's a few things that, that caught my attention in terms of, of career, right? First of all, it's a movie that has a lot of risk taking, right? You know, uh, uh, for example, um, Han Solo, when we see him in the movie, he's being, you know, he won in the previous one, right? We don't even remember that, but he won the previous one, and then he's now back into smuggling things. For what? Because he was bored, right? He was bored, he went to do something, you know, he's risk taking, right? Uh, uh, Flynn is the guy, he wants to run away. You know, he, he's, he's running away from, from, from the, it's not the Federation anymore, it's, who, who's that? It was like the, the one, Empire? Hmm? The no, it's not the Empire, what's, what's the name of the thing, something one, right? Isn't the it? New Order. New Order, yeah, the New Order. So, so he's running away from it, and so he, he has not, he doesn't want to take any risk, he just want to get out of the, of the, of the, the you know, the, the whole system, right? He just wanted to get to, to the fringe and disappear. But then his friend got captured, and immediately he decides, I gotta take the risk. I gotta go save my friend, right? Uh, there's a, you know, uh, there's a, a very strong scene that Han Solo decides to take. Well, first of all, he takes a lot of risk because they done, they finish the thing they need to do, right? And they're going away, right? We, we've done it. We've we got the, the information we needed. We're just gonna go to our ship and go back. And then he looks around and say, Oh man, those guys are having trouble. We gotta help them, right? So he goes, he goes, takes more risk. And then he goes into that, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to not give any spoils here, but he goes into this big, big place and, um, you know, he sees his son over there. And he, he decides to take even more risk, right, for a huge reward. You know, if, if in that scene, if he's able uh, uh, to, to convince his son, he gets, you know, he would finish the, 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 the you know, he would win the whole thing because his son would come back. Uh, to the good side, right? Uh, the whole war is going to just end because the guy making war would, would just be in the good side, right? So the whole thing would end. So huge risk he's taking for a huge reward. And that's the important thing. You know, if, if you don't take risks, the reward you get is very small. Right? So, you gotta, so in your career, that's very important for your career. Our software developer career, we gotta take risks, right? Because if we just do what's normal, if we just do what we're comfortable with, if we just do our job, 
there's not going to be a big reward. Right? So you got to do more. You got to experiment with new things. You got to learn new stuff. You got to do things you're not comfortable with. You got to get in projects that you don't believe you can make it and say, I will make it and do it. Right? If you don't take risks, your career is not going to go anywhere. You know, you're just going to be a mediocre developer. And people, people say, no one wants to be a mediocre. But mediocre means medium. It's not bad. It's just okay. And we don't want to be okay. Right? Software development is one of the most amazing careers in the industry. We want to be the top. Right? We're going to talk about how to, how to be the top. That's, that's the whole purpose of this whole thing here. Is how you can be the top, right? So, so yes, that's that's it's it, it, so taking risk is very important. And the funny thing is that I watched another movie from Star Wars, yes, last night. And this other movie was uh, the Revenge of the Sith. Is that is that the number number three movie? As Revenge of the Sith, I think is the name, right? Any Star Wars fans here? I, anyway, is 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 the third is the third movie. Is, is the movie is the movie where uh, Anakin Skywalker turns into Darth Vader, right? Remember that one? I don't. <laughs> you know, for the first half of the movie, there's absolutely no risk taking whatsoever, and then I slapped. I have no idea what happened after that, right? Because the re the thing is, for the for first half of the movie, the Jedi's they're just walking in the park, right? You know, they, they have all this, this place with hundreds of droids, and they just come in and kills everyone. Nothing happens to them. They're making fun the whole time. They're not having fun. It's one thing to, be, to do hard things and have fun doing it, but that's not what the movie is going on. They're, they're not having fun. They're making fun. Right? They're like you know, a, a, a Spider-Man type of jokes. Right? But, you know, Spider-Man is a teenager. Those guys are not. Like, they're just kind of making jokes. Uh, and it's, it's boring. Nothing happens in the movie. Right? You know, I don't even know why we want you to watch that thing. And, and so, taking risk, it's much more interesting than not taking risk. Right? And we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take this to heart. Your, your, your job, your career can be extremely interesting. But for it to be interesting, you gotta have to take risks, right? So that's first. That's number. The first thing I've learned watching Star Wars yesterday. The second thing I learned watching Star Wars yesterday was that, okay, taking risk is great, but taking risk for taking risk, not good. Not good, right? You know, Han Solo, he decides to take risk for taking risk. He's bored. So he goes does smuggling, and he's just taking risks for no reason whatsoever. He's like a hero to the galaxy, and he's just there taking risks for no reason. And what happens? His life just gets worse. Nothing good comes out of it. So taking risks for taking risks is no good. you got to have a purpose. you got to have a reason why you do things. And... It's amazingly important that your career, you have to have a why. You have to have a reason why you do things. Right? Why do you stay up? You know, it's a, it's a choose, I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm spacing out a little bit here because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very tired. But, you know, I shouldn't have done the marathon of Star Wars. But anyway, I would not have much to say here, right? So, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's Tuesday. Tuesday night, like 7 o'clock, 7.30, and you're watching this crazy guy coming from Brazil that's famous for wearing a Brazilian flag and walking around for puppets and funny shoes. I mean, why are you doing this? Right? You know, why are you why are doing this instead of being in your house with your spouse or with your kids or doing something or, or even watching Star Wars? Right? You know, you have to have a reason for you do this. Otherwise, you're going to stop. Otherwise, you're not going to do the things that need to be done. Life will throw at you all kinds of hard things. It's amazing. You know, you decide to learn a new technology, and next day your car breaks. Right? I was coming here. Everything was ready for me to come here 
and I got sick. Saturday. There's lots of things I need to finish before travel, and I didn't. I was really bad. I couldn't stand up. Right? So no, life will show you all kinds of difficult things all the time. Anything you want to do, there's going to be, oh, there's going to be a new game, there's going to be a new, a new, a new uh, movie, uh, your kid's going to do something, your wife's going to do something, uh, you know, your, 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 le your roof is going to leak, right? You know, there's hundreds of things going to happen. And if you don't have a purpose, if you don't know why you're doing it, you're just going to look at the other things and you're going to stop doing the things that matter. You're not going to have the energy to keep doing because if you have to fix, if you have to spend a whole day fixing the, the leak that, in your roof that's, that's, that's leaking, you're going to have to work on, your, on learning a new language at night. And if you don't see a purpose for that, which one are you going to stop doing? You know, you, you, you can't just forget about the leak in the roof, right? You're just going to stop learning the new language. So you have to have your reason. You have to have your why. Right? And we see this in the movie, right? You know, when, when, the, when the characters have a reason to do things, they go and do it. Now contrast this to the, to the previous movie, to the, the Revenge of the Fifth, where, you know, you have Anakin Skywalker, and he says, you know, I want to save my wife. My wife is not going to die because I'm going to save her. So I'm going to go in the dark side. I'm going to learn all these new, new, new technologies. Right? He's learning a new technology. I'm going to learn all this new technology because I want to save my wife. And then the moment he learns it, he tries to kill her. Right? I mean, what's the point? You know, he has no purpose in his life. Right? It's no wonder why he goes into the dark side. He has no purpose. The only purpose he ever had in his life, he, ch he changes like this for no reason. You know, he meets this guy, and the guy says, look, you should come to the dark side. Next thing, he's killing kids. <coughs> His friends. That's a person with no purpose whatsoever. That's why the first, the, the, you know, this, this Revenge of the Fifth movie is so boring. Right? There's nothing in it. And the other one is so much more interesting because people have a reason. They're already doing things. Now, now that you have... Now they understand the importance of for you to, to take risks and take risks for purpose. There's one more thing I learned in the movie. Is you gotta calm down. And you gotta, you know, you gotta focus and breathe. Breathe to remember what is important. There's a scene where you know, the guy that I forgot the name now. Uh, you know, the, 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 the fifth lord is, trying, is almost killing um, uh, Ray, right? Almost killing Ray, that's, that's the, main, the main character. And she's fighting, she's just defending herself. And the guy's kind of relentless, coming to her. And she's just defending herself, nothing more. Defense, 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 defense. And then when she's almost falling into, into the precipice, he tells her, because she's lost, right? He basically conquered her. And he tells her, look, you can be so much better. I can teach you. I can teach you how to use the force. And you're going to be better. And at that moment, she stops. She stops. She closes her eyes. And she thinks back. You know, the force. That's the reason why she's here. Right? She's not here to defend herself. She's here to master the force. And that's when she turns the game and wins for him. Right? If we spend our life running after the little things that need to be done, if we spend our life defending ourselves from everything that life throws at us, we spend our lives being busy. And being busy is not being effective. We gotta be we, we, not, we, not, we, should, we, should, we have, don't have to do things that brings more busyness for us. We got to do things that brings more results to us. So you have to understand what risk you're taking, what is your why, what results you actually want. So you can do the things that will bring you results instead of doing hundreds of other things that will just look like you're doing something. It's amazing how many people 
they spend the whole day busy, right? You no, know, this looks like this person. You say, man, that person must be a very important person. She's busy the whole time, or he's busy the whole time. He's doing so many things, and he never gets anywhere. Because if a person that, that, you know, they want to be busy, they want to look busy a lot of times, they want to be so busy doing the things every day, and they get to the end of the day, oh man, I was so busy. But then, how, how did you advance your goals? Which goals? <coughs> I don't have any. I just do what my boss tells me to do. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you don't have your goals, and you keep just doing, you keep just defending yourself for what life throws at you, you're not going to get anywhere, right? You're going to be an Anakin Skywalker that's going to be, you know, you're going to go to the dark side of even realizing you're going to the dark side, right? Because you're just going to be a boring character in a boring movie. And you guys are not here to be a boring character in a boring movie. You are here to be the hero. You know, if you want to buy a t-shirt, you can, you still can, right? The one dollar here. But no, not buy a t-shirt, but you can, you, can, you can run for a t-shirt. No, because you're here to be the hero of your story. And to be the hero of your story, you have to take responsibility for your story. Right? If you don't take responsibility for your story, someone else is going to be the hero of your story. And I'll repeat this. We work on the most amazing career ever. Extremely collaborative. You can do anything you want. Anything. I had, I had a friend of, of mine the other day that said, Bruno, my dream was to work on Disney. I said, why? Oh, because, you know, that's, that's my dream for many years. I said, okay, cool. Do you want to work on Disney? Let's take a look. So we went to the Disney open source projects on Disney. They have hundreds. Hundreds, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating here. I don't know, but they have lots of open source projects. Lots. I said, you can work for Disney tomorrow if you want. Or today. Just join an open source project of them and you're working for them. Or you're at least working with them. Right? And you do this for a few months and you're working for them if you want. Anything. You want to work for Disney? Then I ask him, now, now that you know that's possible, do you want to work for Disney? Because that's like a, a dream that you have right now, or that's a kid's dream. And he took me a week. And he came back and said, Bruno, I thought very, very hard about this, and it's a kid's dream. Okay, good. Right? So that's not your focus. So what is your focus then? Let's find, let's find a real, real thing. Right? Don't spend your life, you know, you guys can work on anything you want. Want to work on, on, on space? You can. You know, want to work on, on, on toys? You can. Want to work on, on science stuff? You can. Absolutely anything. But if you can work with anything, you got to decide what it is that you want to work with. You got to be responsible for your career. That's the most important thing that you got to do all the time. Right? So, and that's just the introduction, right? I'm not even starting yet. <laughs> <laughs> but are we ready for the break? No, not break yet, right? <laughs> but you know, but, but one thing, you, you guys are gonna do the, the the giveaways in a minute, right? No, we and, do it at the end. Then I know, and then yeah, right. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know, um, thanks Paul for for making me pay the pizza, right? So that's, <laughs> that was good. So, uh, but I'm gonna give you guys a gift that's bigger than the pizza, right? So, uh, but, you know, it's not gonna be right now, but by the end of it. I'll tell you guys uh, a, a big gift, but right now what I want to tell you, since it's not there anymore, let me just put it here. So I do run this Code for Life initiative. Uh, that is, it's a website where I put a lot of a lot of content about career. Right? It's all free. Uh, you know, delivered to your email. If you if you go to code for life dot code for dot life right now, don't write it down. Get your phone and, and type in your phone. Yes. Why, why are you writing down? You know, you're going to forget about this and just type in your phone right now. Yes. You yeah, just go ahead, put in your phone, code for life, you put your name, your email there, you get, a, you get an email from me. Immediately. Right? So now you can talk with me if any doubts, any doubts you have, anything that we didn't touch here, you can send me an email and you can ask things and I'll, I'll help you out. 
right? My objective in life is help you improve your career. That's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. And let me tell you why I do this. A lot of people say, Bruno, Bruno why do you do this? And there's a, there's a very strong reason why I do this. You know, it's, it's 1995, January of 1995. Um, I'm a 20-something years old kid. I have no idea what life is like. And, uh, you know, since the, since the very first day that I got into university, I started working. And my father, he was against me working totally. He's like, Bruno, you shouldn't work. And he had a reason, right? He, he, he was an engineer, and uh, he didn't graduate on time. So he had a wife and my, my older daughter before he graduated. And I'm not sure how it is here, but in Brazil, if you're an engineer and you, didn't, you don't have a degree, you can't work. Right? So he couldn't, he couldn't feed his family. So he, he didn't want that to happen to me. He's like, Bruno, university first, graduate first, and then you start working. And so he convinced me to stop working, and I stopped working. Then I went in January of 1995, I went to, 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 to his city, and we were at the beach, right? And I told him, Dad, this whole thing about not working is not working for me. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to go back to work. He's like, no, you don't, you don't need to do this. Don't do it. I said, I'll do it. Don't do it. I'll do it. Don't do it. We start fighting, right? You know, you know how those things go, right? And we start fighting, and I got mad, and I kicked sand on him, and he got mad, and I got up and got in the car, went home, and he got up, and he went in the car and got home, went home after me. You know, we were pissed off with each other, and I got, in, got at home, and I slammed the door in his face, I was really mad. I was going to work no matter what. And he's, he's, he's uh, was adamant in forcing me not to. In the middle of the discussion, the phone rang. And the voice on the other side said, Bruno, Newton Gadgets from Sun Microsystems is looking for a trainee. And if you want that position, he said it's yours. That was my friend that I lived with in Sao Paulo. That we shared an apartment in Sao Paulo. And at that moment, in the middle of the fight, my father is still wearing beach clothes, sat down with me on his computer to write my first resume with me. Two months later, March, I joined Sun Microsystems, and a week later, Java was announced for the first time. So if my father had not helped me on that moment, there might be no Brazilian Java man. So I know how important it is to have someone on your side on that moment because it was really important for me. So I'm here because I really want to help you, each one of you, to get your career on track. Right? That's why I created the Code for Life initiative, to help you. So on that, when you join there, you're going to see the secret of, the, you know, everyone I can get. I'm going to interview Paul tonight. <laughs> right? Everyone I can get, I want to take their secrets, why, why they, are, they are who they are. So you can learn and you can, and you can be a better developer. Right? So, uh, let me quickly ask one thing here to see where we're going with this. First of all, this, I want to be, this, I just kind of tell the stories here right now, but I want to be this very interactive, right? My objective is not to talk about what I want to talk about. Oops. I said I was going to try. Okay, I'm gonna, it's, not, it's not about what I want to talk about. It's about what you need to be to, that, that we discuss, right? So first things, here, I know I, some, of, some of the people introduced yourself. Uh, you've mentioned that you are just starting. So who here is a junior developer? Junior developer, someone who's been working with you know, one, two, at most three years uh, as a developer or IT. Doesn't need, it's not about, only about development, right? So who here is a junior? in your career, or even last, right, no, someone out of the university is, is a junior, right, yes, okay, it's three people is a junior, all right, so who here is uh, like, a, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a more, it's more like a professional and has been working with, with technology for, 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 you know, from three to five or maybe six years, okay, this one person, so who here has more 
than five, six years of career. Okay, cool. All right. Just so I have an idea. Because those, there's, there's different things that we can do. Right? There's, there's very different things that we can do. Actually, in Brazil, I asked one more thing. is who doesn't have English, but that's not your case. <laughs> right? So, um, you know, the thing is, if you're a junior developer, right, uh, you gotta you gotta learn the basics. That's what you gotta do. There's there's nothing much we can do. I mean, there's not much, much that you need to do. You know, you gotta learn the basics. That means you gotta go and do things. Let me tell you one thing about software development. Software development, it's not about knowledge. It's amazing how the developers are obsessed with idea of the idea of knowledge. I want to learn new things. I want to learn Spring. I want to learn Java. I want to learn, learn, learn. Software development is not about learning. Software development is about skills. Actually, anything in life is about skills, but in particular, software development. It's about skills, right? Let me tell you the difference between learning and skills. Everyone here works with computers, so you work very well with the keyboard, right? No? Yeah? You work very well with the keyboard, right? You, you probably type better than most, right? You know, maybe you're not a professional typist, right? My wife, for example, she types 100 times faster than I do, but you probably type faster than most. You, are, you, you do well with the keyboard. You know, if, you close your, if you close your eyes, you can, you can type your name without looking at the keyboard, right? I'm sure you can type your password without looking at the keyboard. <laughs> actually, sometimes you, if you look at the keyboard, it actually makes it worse, right? You know, uh, how do you learn a keyboard? If I write a book about, you know, learning how to type, would that work? If you read a book, works? No, right? That is learning. Read a book about a keyboard, that's learning. It's not learning. You gotta, you gotta type on the keyboard. If you don't type on the keyboard, you're never gonna be a good, uh, someone good on the keyboard. That's soft development. You can read as many books as you want about as many languages as you want. You can watch as many presentations as you want. None of these will help you create the skills, right? Uh, uh, knowledge, it's unconnected memory in your brain. Oh, by the way. Uh, you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that. I'm sure you've heard, you've, you've heard like, you, you type fast because you have muscle memory. you heard of that, right? Uh, muscle memory is that idea that you usually apply to sports, right? Oh, the guy knows how to throw the ball in the hoop because he has muscle memory, right? It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as muscle memory. Your muscle doesn't remember anything. He doesn't know what to do. It's all in the brain. So now, if you are a software developer, the same muscle memory that you have when you're doing a sports or when you type on the keyboard, that is the same muscle memory that you need when you develop code. Because it, it's not your hands, it's your brain. So just a parenthesis here. As a software developer, it's your obligation to understand how your brain works, right? If you, are, if you are a soccer player or a football player, don't you need to understand how your muscle works? Because if you stress your muscle too much, you, 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 you're gonna get yourself out of the game, right? Same thing. As a developer, you're, you work with your brain all the time. You have to understand how it works. You have to understand why you need to make it grow. You have to understand what you need to get to, to, to rest it. So let me tell you an example. Research about muscle memory. They got three groups of people. She went to you know, professional basketball players. And they went to shoot the ball on the hoop. First group went there on, on, the, on the, the, in the field throwing balls on the hoop. The second group, talking about professionals here, right? The second group, because they're professional, they know how to do it. They, they didn't go out to throw the ball. They only had to stay thinking 
about throwing the ball. And the third group didn't do anything. So the first and the second group improved the same amount. Just by thinking that you're throwing the ball, you're improving the same amount. You're practicing because you're not practicing your hands. You're practicing your brain. Your brain is the one that knows what you need to be done. That's the same thing with your soft development. You gotta, you gotta put your brain to, to its face, right? So it's about skills. It's not about knowledge. So junior developers, it's about the skills. Go do things. Go program. Go write codes. Go, go solve problems. There's five things you need to do. There's five things you need to do to be a great software developer. Five, let's say, top level skills that you need to do. Right? First of all, you, got to, you have to read code. Read code is a basic skill that you have to have. It's amazing how many professional developers never read code or only read code they, they, they wrote themselves. Do you want to improve on anything? You got to take risks. You got to do what you don't know. If you just keep doing what you know, you don't grow. Your brain, you know, if you do 10 push-ups every day, after a week, what happens? You need to increase. Hmm? You need to increase. You need to increase. Oh, yes, you need to increase, right? You have, you know, after a week, you can do 10 push-ups without even feeling it. If you keep doing 10 push-ups, what happens? Yeah. Nothing. It's the same thing. If you keep reading code that you know, if you keep reading code that you, already, that you wrote yourself, you're not improving. Right? Nothing's happening. Your brain, you know why not, nothing happens? Another thing about the brain, because your brain, your brain, it's a very complex machine, right? And it already uses 20% of the energy in your, in your body. Very tiny and small uses 20% of the energy in your body. Because it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, your brain uh, uses energy very efficiently. Because if it did not, if it was an energy expansion, uh, 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 you know, throw away machine, you would just lay down the whole day in bed because it would just consume out the energy of your body. So because of, so, so your brain already, even being very conscious of using energy, already uses 20%. So your brain, what it does is, it changes itself. You know, for the old guys like me, you've, you've, I'm sure when you, you're kids, you learn that the brain doesn't grow, right? The brain doesn't change. That's, that's a lie. We were lied to when we were kids. Right? Uh, the brain, well, they didn't know it bad at that time, so it's not a lie. But, you know, the brain changes itself. The brain grows uh, not new cells, but it creates new pathways depending on how you use your brain. It, it does grow new cells. It does grow new cells. Thank you, thank you. Even that. As long as you exercise, by the way. Hmm? As long as you exercise. As, exactly, that's what I'm going to say. As long as, as long as you exercise, right? You have to force your brain. Your brain changes itself to learn new things, to learn new skills. So if you don't force your brain to learn, it doesn't because it doesn't need to. So what happens is you want to type the keyboard, and when you start typing the keyboard, it's all hard, and you miss the letters and you, it's, it's not fast enough, all of that. But then you keep forcing, keep forcing, keep forcing, and one day, that happens a lot of, of language. You're trying to learn a new language, and you, you can't learn, you don't understand anything, nothing makes sense, you can't read anything, people say nothing happens, and then suddenly, from almost from one day to the next, poof, you learn a new language. You're able to speak or learn to understand, everything seems immediate. That's how the brain works. You know, it says, I'm not going to learn it, I'm not going to learn it, I'm not going to learn it, I'm not going to learn it because learn new things means spending more energy, I don't want to spend more energy so I'm not going to learn anything. And you keep forcing, keep forcing, one day it says, okay, you really need that stuff, right? So I'm going to learn it right now and so I, I, I'm going to reconfigure myself 
to learn that stuff so you don't need to spend any energy anymore. That's how the brain works. So every time you need to do things you're not comfortable with. You need to force your brain. So go read code that you don't understand. Right? Read code that you don't wrote. Oh, actually, if you move this thing here, right? Why, why am I doing it in the corner? Okay. Yes, I can help the camera and everyone else. And me. <laughs> okay. You know, I like to be in center state, right? Okay. So read code. Important, very important. Second thing is write code. Again, you know, you're working on a, a spring application and you know, you know how to do your hibernate code and your, all those things. You, you know this by heart and lots of people tell me this. Oh, yes, you know, I know, I know all the code in the projects. I've, I write those things. doesn't help you. you got to write code you don't understand. That's why it's so important when a new version of Java comes out that you learn the new features. Right? You've got you to force yourself to learn new things. Not only to learn, to apply them. Again, it's all about skills. Those is not knowledge, it's skills. And you know how you know that skill? If you are, if you are, you know, just starting, you said you're just out of the university, right? You're just out of the university. So she, who, who is the person here that has more than 10 years of experience here? Someone? Okay, so I'll, I'll get you guys. So, you know, she's just starting, you have 10 years of experience, right? So what is the difference? You read code, she reads code. You write code, she writes code. Well, every time I look at new code, whether it's in the language or a different language, I understand how they relate to each other. Right. You, you know how to read code much better than she does. But even then, even then you, wrote, you read code much better than she does, you can still improve it. Absolutely. Right? That's a skill. So far, science has not found a limit on how much you can, you can improve in your skills. The only limits we found so far, and even then we keep breaking them, are physical limits. Right? You can't jump higher because you're not, you know, because you're, you're only two meters high. But then they find new techniques and you jump higher. Right? But in your brain, when it's soft development, we, we don't know we don't know any limit any limits. Right? So you know you can you can be much better at what you do. Okay, read code, write code. Number three, deliver code. Many, many developers think that all they, you know, that, that's, that's, once they finish coding and, and commit to the repository, their job is done. As a software development, your job is to, is to automate someone's problem, right? That's what we do. We automate someone to solve someone's problem. Until someone is using your code, your job is not done. So you got to be good at this. you got to be good at putting your code in the hands of people. If you're not good at putting your code in the hands of people, if you delegate this to someone else, if you don't know automation, if you don't know, uh, uh, you know testing and continuous integration, all those, those things, then you're not doing your job. you got to improve it all the time how to deliver your code. Number four, I already mentioned it a little bit here, is solve problems. That's what we do. We solve problems all the time. That's a skill. Look around you right now. See what problems there is in this room. See what problems the user group has. See what problems the pizza guy has. Right? See what problems the flight that I just took has. The airport. Your car. The camera right here. What problems those? Everything has problems. If you have the mindset of looking around you all the time, looking at problems, and thinking about ways to solve that problem, even if you don't solve the problem, just think about ways of solving the problem. Stop complaining about life, right? And think a way of solving the problem. You know, because if you really want to solve the problem, oh, we're talking about when you got here in the car. I, I bit my tongue, I didn't say anything. Right, we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, the global warming. That's a conversation we can have forever, right? Uh, uh, you know, so many conversations, like hot topics that we have those days, we can have those conversations forever. It's going to help us? 
We can be complaining about it forever. But if you're really interested in solving that problem, we gotta go work eight hours a day for 10 years. And then we're gonna know how to solve that problem, right? Someone has to go do that instead of complaining about it, right? So don't complain about things. See the things that you are interested in solving and go solve them, right? That's, that's our job as developers, solving problems. We gotta be good at this. Look around you all the time. Find problems to solve. Solve problems for you, for your wife, for your kids, for the school of your kids, for the non-profit organization, for your church, for whatever. Go find problems to solve. So that's for the juniors. That's what you need to do. Go find problems to solve. Every day. And go solve them. Right? And then you think about, oh, come on. There's so many problems out there. I'm not the, the best person to solve them. Let me tell you a little story. I was, um, eight years ago, I moved to the house I live right now. And, um, and so we were first time, first day that we were actually there. And I told my wife, I said, look, um, I, I, we passed, every time we came here, we passed by the pizza place. I don't know the phone number. I'm just going to go there, buy the pizza, and, and so we can experiment. So we went to buy the pizza. And while I was there, buying the pizza, there was a, a you know, pizza delivery guy with his motor, motorcycle. I'm not sure how, here if they deliver a motorcycle or not, but in Brazil, every pizza delivery guy delivers a motorcycle. So he comes with the motorcycle, and he started a conversation with the pizza, you know, the, the owner of the pizza place. And, uh, and then he was like, oh, you know, you know what? I'm doing, the, the, the delivery guy, right? Saying, I'm doing a software to automate, uh, you know, pizza places. And the guy said, oh, that's interesting because, you know, we always, we always needing to improve the, our process and everything like that. And I was like, interesting, you know, the, the pizza guy is, is talking about software, that's cool. And so the, so the guy said, uh, you know, and, and you're the, the, the owner of the pizza place, and, and, and you're, gonna, you're writing in what? And then the pizza, the, the delivery guy said, well, I've been looking at Visual Basic, and I've, I've also thought about C, and, uh, but, but I, I haven't started writing it yet. And then the, pizza, the owner said, have you thought about Java? I'm like, I'm right there, sitting right by there. <laughs> and he had no idea that Java man was sitting right by him. And I said, have you thought about Java? So the guy said, yes, I've heard of, about Java and I could, I, could, I could even run on Linux, right? That's a cool thing because then I don't have, uh, people don't have to pay license for Microsoft. I said, well, you know, the guy knows what he's talking about. That's not bad. So that's, that's the, 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 the owner of the pizza place. He said, do you know what feature we needed in a, in a soft like this? And I'm like, man, the guy's going to spill the beans, right? He's going to tell the secret. That's what we want. We want soft problems. If the owner of the place tells me what he needs, that's something I can do. So I was thinking, I, I, I work with IoT, and I have, I'm friends of Vinicius saying one of the top IoT developers in the world, I was all thinking, you know, a little robot to turn the pizza in the oven and control the temperature. I'm like, whoa, man, what is the secret? And the guy said, I'd love to have a website where people could choose their pizza and I would get an email. <laughs> right? That's a software you can write in an afternoon. Right? For sure. I don't even know what you study and how long you study or each language you know, but you know, you can do this in the afternoon. And a lot of times we don't look around and we don't see problems to solve. And a lot of times it's so easy to solve problems. Right? So you gotta have this idea. Solving problems. Amazing, amazing important skill. Number five. Uh, Read code, write code, deliver code, solve problems, and share what you know. Software development is one of the most collaborative industries in the planet. You watch a movie like I watched it yesterday, when the movie ends, you have like 20 minutes of credits coming up with lots of people that participate in the movie reality. Soft is like this. Any software you do, hundreds of people behind it are making it happen. Right? And it's, it's, a, it's an industry that 
you know, it's software is done by people, for people, marketed by people, sold by people, supported by people. It's people all over. And if you join software development thinking that you don't like to deal with people, you have to deal with the computers, I'm sorry, but they lied to you too. I got into that. I thought that I do not have to deal with people because I was going into software. That's not true. Software development is a very collaborative industry. So either you know how to share what you know, or you are out of the collaboration. You gotta be able to explain to people on a meeting, over email, over uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a discussion, why you're doing this, how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna fix it, how the problem needs to be solved. You have to know how to share, right? Share your ideas. Share, share, you know, how you're going to do all those things. Understand, sharing is not only about talking, it's about listening. No, it's not forcing into others what you know. It's sharing. Sharing means I'm going to share what you know and I'm going to listen to what you have. Very collaborative industry. you got to know how to do this. The best way for you to be a better developer Go speak. Come here. Paul is offering you a stage. Oh, Bruno, but I don't know what I'm going to say. Well, talk with Paul. Oh, but I, I, I don't know who I'm going to talk to. He's offering you a stage for you to come here and present to others. And if you're not coming here every month to say something, you're missing an opportunity. Because that is what makes, it, that makes a big difference. And you know why sharing is so important? When we think, we, we developers like to, to, like to think that we think, right? When we think in our brains, our brains are full of prejudice, full of, of preconceived op opinions. It's, you know, uh, we suffer from one thing that's called um, the knowledge curse. Who here has heard of the knowledge curse? The knowledge curse is the thing is, once you know something, you don't know what is not to know. Right? You get that problem when a kid asks you, you know, uh, uh, why the sun is bright? And then you say, oh, it's bright because there's fire in it. And so why? So you know that kid? So you, it's, it's hard to explain to a kid why something hard is the way it is. Because you know and you don't understand that she doesn't know. That's the curse of knowledge. So we keep thinking about solutions or, or problems or whatever in our brains, and our brains get in circles because it's, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we have pre those preconceived notions. So now, you get what you think in your head, and you try to explain to someone else, and that's when you think. That's when you put, it could be in writing, when you write down a blog post, for example. You write down an article, right? Why you have to do dissertations when you're in your university? Because you have to put your thought in paper. And when you put your thought in paper, that's when you think. When you come here in front of, of someone and you explain to someone something, that's when you think. So if you don't share, you don't think. If you don't think, you don't improve. Right? Because you say something, just by saying it, it's already proved what you know. And if the other person tells you, well, it's not exactly like this, or if they say, I don't really understand what you're trying to say, then you're thinking even more. Right? So that's five basic skills. Of course, there's a lot of sub-skills in all of these, right? But if you're a general developer, but also if you're not a general developer, those are the skills you gotta, you got to master. You really got to master those five skills. Go deep in each one of them. Each one of them has lots of different things, right? Read code. Read code in Java is a skill. Read code in Python is another skill. Read code, it's all reading code, right? Same thing, writing code. You know, writing code for object-oriented is one thing. Writing functional code is another thing. So for juniors, what you need to do? Go do those things every day. 
right? Do one hour a day of those five things. If you can, do one hour a day of each one, right? Do one hour a day, every day. Oh, come on, Bruno. One hour a day. That's not going to take me anywhere. It will. I've seen many cases of people that completely change their lives by doing one hour a day of those things. But there's one, one story that I like to tell a lot, because you, you, can, you can search that story online. Uh, it's a girl called Jennifer DeWalt. You can search, search for her online later. Jennifer DeWalt, she decided she's going to take a project. Uh, she did more than one hour a day. But she decided she's going to do a project. She would start to learn how to program. And, and, and she was an artist. She had nothing to do with technology at all. She was an artist. Right? She did, she did uh, you know, uh, like, like uh, uh, installation in museums kind of thing. And, and she decided that, you know, that she needed to learn how to code, how to write software, because that would make her art better. And what did she do? She created a project. That's, that's how she became famous for. It's 180 days of coding. Six months. Six months. Every day, she found a problem that she needed to solve. And some of those problems are very small. You know, she needed to put something across, across the, the browser window. Right? She found a problem she needed to solve. She wrote the code. I mean, she, read, she learned. She, go, she went to read JavaScript or whatever language she was working with to read and understand, that, understand what she needed to do. She wrote the code. But here's the catch. She put the code online, working for people to run, and she wrote a blog post every single day for 180 days. Before Jennifer, you can you should, should take a take a look at her story to see the details. But before she finished the her project, she had found people online that hire her. She found a person that wanted to, to create a company with her. So before the end of the 180 days, she was hired. She, was, uh, she had a company, a software development company. Then she launched a new, another company, a second company. And now she is a, a Y Combinator founder. She is one of the Y Combinator is, is like the top uh, startup incubator in the planet. Right? I think she, they incubated Dropbox, for example. So now she has a company being incubated by Y Combinator. She's like a very tiny, it's like they have like 50 companies per year that they incubate. 180 days. And she, came, she completely changed her life. She went from not knowing anything, right? So it's totally possible. Yes, those things will change your career. It doesn't matter which level you are. If you keep fo focused on those things, it will completely change your career. Make sense? So those for the juniors and for everyone else too. But I like to go to, to talk a lot about it because everyone else benefits from this. But people that are they're more advanced, right? Let me tell you one thing. If you are in between, if you are more than a junior, but not, you know, you don't have four, five, six years of experience yet, uh, you got to be better at what you do, right? You know, a junior, you have to learn the basic of everything. You have to learn the basic of operation systems, the basic of language pro programming, the basic of compiling. You have to learn all those basics of everything. But if you already are a professional for several years, you got to be good at something. Stop saying, oh, I'm good at every, you know, I, 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 I have to, I want to keep my options open, right? I want to know, know, know a little bit of everything. Knowing a little bit of everything means that you're not good at anything. And if you're not good at anything, you're not competing for the best positions ever, right? You're always competing for the, the mediocre positions because you're mediocre at everything. If you want to be good at a little bit of everything, you know, when you know, people say, 
uh, that's a duck, right? You know, you don't, you, don't walk, you don't run well, you don't swim well, you don't fly well, right? But you can be an amazing generalist. No one said you have to concentrate in one thing, but if, if you're really good at learning new things and, put your, and, pre, and, and, and putting that thing to work, maybe you're a very good generalist and you can be the best generalist in the market and that, that's, that could be great. Right? So you have to find what is your strength is. Okay? But, you know, for, for but now, if you are a professional for a long time, for like six years or five, five six years or more, and in your career is not growing, and you're, you're, you don't like what you're doing, and that's why you're here, uh, let me tell you what, there's no reason whatsoever that after six years of experience that you cannot do anything you want. Seriously. After six years of experience, you have everything that it takes. You have already. So if your career is stuck, if you have you know, four, five, six years of experience or more than that, and if your career is stuck, seriously, come talk to me. Seriously. And that's, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my gift for you guys later. Right? Come talk to me because something is wrong. For juniors, it's easy. I can tell you. You know, if you're not growing, you go do this. That's easy. If you're if you're mid level, it's easy, right? You know, I'm gonna talk about the next things here. It's you can do those things. But if you're if you're many years of experience and you're not growing, probably I can talk to you and find out what's wrong and completely change your life. Seriously, you know, I have one guy, a friend of mine. He was he was here in the U.S. last week. I thought I was gonna meet him here. Uh, and his name is Elder Morales, right? Elder has many, many years of experience. He's a Java E developer for many years. His career was completely stuck. Nothing happened, right? He, he had doubts if he, if he would be able to, 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 to keep her family, to his family. He would be able to put food on, on, on his family's table. Because, you know, uh, his company was changing, he's gonna, he, he's gonna lose his job, all of that. So last year, May of last year, exactly a year ago, Elder finally found his focus. The thing that he's been working for many years, Java EE. From May to now, right, Elder launched a new project called the Java EE 8, the next frontier. He met and talking with the top Java E developers in the planet. He created, uh, uh, you know, his, his series of videos is until today is on the YouTube channel of at Java. Right? He, uh, uh, he was called to write a book that's, that's being released right now. It's, it's on Amazon. Uh, today. It's, it's probably this week. Because I, I, I know I know there's going to be an event on the 21st in Brazil, and he wants he's, he's going to have books there to sign. So his, his books should be coming out right now. He was invited by Oracle to become an Oracle champion. There's like a Java champion board for Oracle products. Uh, and late late last year, he was hired by Oracle to be a Java to be an Oracle Cloud evangelist. Six months. Oh, and in the middle of the process, he created a community of 2,000 people. He went from zero on Twitter to 1,000 people following him on Twitter. Right? In six months, this guy completely changed his life. And he sent me this morning, actually not this morning, yesterday, before I travel, he sent me uh, the, the, the foreword of his book written by Ed Burns, The Spec Lead of Serverless. And if you read what Ed wrote, I was crying. The way that Ed talked about, about, about Elder. Right? And Elder was like, man, I, don't be, I can't believe. Like, a year ago, all of this seemed impossible. So if you're, if you're feeling stuck, there is things we can do to, to, to solve that. So let's, let's talk about what is it we can do. So when, when do you want to do the break? Or there's break, no break. Just keep going. What do you guys want? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep break. going. So that's a good moment for us to do break. Yes. Okay? So. All right.
Good. Good moments. Okay. Let's so take five. five minutes. Yeah. All right. Five minutes.